back to last book, Mark Spencer. Thank you, Michael. Is this on? Yeah. Thank you, Michael, and thanks for having me here tonight. Um, who here has Final Cut Pro 10 on your computer? All right. And so keep your hand up if you have Final Cut Pro 10 and you do not have Motion 5. Okay, a bunch of hands went down. So we got a lot of people here who aren't on Final Cut 10 yet. We got people using Final Cut 10 not using Motion. So um, what I thought I'd do today, last month, who was here at last month's meeting? So, oh, quite a bit of you. So you saw Andy Neal's presentation. He was the guy that was just up here, and he's a motion guy, so you should talk to him. Um, if you weren't here last month, Andy did a, a motion demo. We talked about publishing and rigging, some new features. He did a great job, and if you haven't seen that, you should get on the Lossy Pug website and check it out. I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to focus on a couple things that you as, a, as an editor can use motion for without caring about doing motion graphics. You don't want to learn how to move motion graphics. You, you, you know, we want somebody else for that. There's a couple things that make motion like a key part to have. Um, it's, it's the cheapest $49 you ever spend just to have it as part of Final Cut. And I'm going to show you a couple things you can do super easy that you would definitely use, or I think you would definitely use. So I'm going to start in Final Cut. And uh, what I'm going to do is, there's a series of browsers over here that you may have discovered if you're in Final Cut that contain a variety of what are called effects. Now the nomenclature is a little weird because the very first one are actually called effects, okay? So effects are one of the effects. Bear with me. Uh, so this is the effects browser and um, it has basically what you might consider filters, although they're, they go a lot further than filters. Uh, then there's this, the photo thing is basically all your photographs, but it also reads your Aperture and iPhoto libraries. It'll read, as of the update, it'll read your movies that are in Aperture now too, which is really cool. And I, I don't know if an iPhoto or not, but definitely an Aperture. Your, your music, all of your iTunes libraries here, and you can drag other music into here too. You put any music in here you want. And then we go to transitions, and then click on all. Uh, we have all these tra transitions you can use in your projects, and there's hundreds of them, like there's 92 transitions, titles, and these things called generators. I'll hit the last one in a minute. So those four, filters, transitions, titles, and generators are the four kinds of effects in Final Cut, and the thing in Final Cut 10. And the thing to understand about them is they are 95, 6% of them are motion projects, all right? Those are all motion projects. So motion is all, all of a sudden moved from a separate motion graphics tool to the underlying uh, technology, the development tool, to make effects for Final Cut Pro. So why should you care? Here, here's an example. I'm going to go to this last one. This is called the Themes Browser. And what the Themes Browser does, it just collects together um, effects that have been tagged as part of the theme. For instance, you might do a show that has a certain look to a title, a certain look to a transition, a certain kind of dream sequence effect, and you can have those all appear in the Themes browser. Anything that's in the Themes browser will appear in their respective browsers as well, but this shows them together. For example, I'm going to choose this one called Boxes. And you can see there's a bunch of different, I'll just click through them, in fact there's a new one in the 10.0.1 update called Tribute, and if I mouse over, you'll get a little preview of that, uh, of that theme. And just take a little while update, now there it goes. Just mouse over it and see what that looks like. So there's titles in this one, there's a transition in this one. You can mouse over and see what that looks like. So I'm just, I'm not clicking on anything, I'm just moving the mouse across it. But I'm going to go to this uh, theme called Boxes. We have two different transitions here, one called Center Reveal and one called Slide In. And I'm going to go down to this one called Drop Down, this title. One thing to know about these, you might think the thumbnail tells you everything about it, but it doesn't it previews the default settings for that particular effect. And many of these effects, effects can be changed pretty dramatically. I'm going to select this one called drop down and I'm just going to tap the uh, W key. The W key is going to do an insert edit. So think F9 is now W. <laughs> okay? What, or three? So, um, or wedge, wedge, three for wedge, that's right, like wedge, you can wedge it in there, like a W looks like three, okay. So I've got this title at the beginning of my sequence and I'll play it, uh, you know, you can see it needs to be rendered here, but I can still play it and uh, it looks fine and I've just got a little, sun, a little footage here, I'm just going to type something in here, um, 
forget what I was doing, uh, Napa. And we'll call this Napa Valley. And we'll call this Harvest. Okay, so you can type right in it. And I'll click the inspector, that's this tiny little button to the right of all these browsers that will give us access to some other things we can change about it. Now the thing to notice up here is these are called, in the title section, are called published parameters. They're things that are published from motion that you can change about this here in Final Cut. And I'll skip the color theme for a minute and I'll use this, let me zoom back out. I'll use the title alignment just to move this over a little bit here, not quite so much. I'm recording the screen as well, so things might be a little slow here. I'll just do it right there. Uh, I've got some different shapes for the animation. I can choose a rectangle, or I can choose an arrow, or I can choose a pill, and maybe I like that. And then there's these color themes. So I've got blue, and I've got yellow, green, pink, orange, uh, and purple. Okay, and that's great, and that looks kind of cool, but um, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this, I really didn't mean, I really meant to hit Q, which would do a connect edit to uh, put this on my, over my footage, since there's some transparency here. So we can see that coming over the footage. Okay, a little sunrise there. It's something uh, we just shot up in Napa last week, a little time lapse. So here's the thing, though. Um, that's great, but it's not exactly what I want. So what I want to show you is very easily how to modify this in motion. You don't need to know motion at all to do this. You just need to have it. So I don't like the color choices. I want something a little more, not red. It doesn't it has an orange. I want something more red. So what I'm going to do is right click directly in this uh, themes browser on that theme and choose open a copy in motion. And if motion is not already running, running, it'll launch motion and bring that open. And here we go. So I'm just going to show you, you can go in and take something that has been rigged already and there's published parameters and add your own color theme. And you can do this to any of the things in here at all and anything you want, any of these themes. It's very easy to do. Here it is. We have this thing. It's all open and ready to go. This is called the layers list now. And this is a rig. If you saw Andy's uh, presentation last month, he taught you how to build a rig. And these are called widgets assigned to the rig. I don't care about that. Color theme. Remember, these are the same things we saw in Final Cut, right? So I'm going to select the color theme. And the one thing you do need to go is you know is you need to go to the inspector. And over in the inspector, we can see this is the same pop-up menu we saw in Final Cut. Blue, yellow, green, pink, orange, purple. Okay? And these are all the colors of the different objects in the project that have been uh, linked or tied or rigged to this thing called a widget. Again, doesn't matter if you understand that or not. All we want to do is add one. So I'm going to click the little plus button here, and I'm just going to call this, I'm not going to call it red, I'll call it warm, because I don't necessarily want it to be red, I want it to have some warm colors. And I've got four different colors here, so all I'm going to do is uh, the white one, I'm going to add like maybe a sort of light kind of yellow here, and then for this guy I'll go with a, a light orange, and this guy will go maybe a darker red, I'll just do something kind of quick and dirty here. And then for the tub subtitle color, I'll do something maybe more like that. Okay, so that took what? You know, 10 seconds or something, except for me talking. So um, I've got a new color theme. I could make 10 of them. I'm gonna just hit Command S to save. I'm gonna go back to Final Cut Pro, and uh, it looks like nothing's changed. I'll give this a second to update, and I'm sorry, I think the, the screen capture's slowing things down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so nothing has changed because when you, when you modify a, a project, an effect in motion, it changes the, the version in the browser. So if I go back to that boxes theme now, you'll see there's a drop down copy version. Not a very good name, <laughs> all right? And not easy to change, but I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But that's, that's my copy. That's what it automatically gives it. It gives it that name. I wish I could click in here and change the name, but I can't. So what I'm going to do is, and check this out, um, remember I went ahead and changed the text, right? So I'm going to take this new version and I'm going to drag it on top of the existing one and I'm going to choose replace and I've got my new one in here 
and it remembers the text. Okay, the text, I don't have to type it all over again. It doesn't remember any settings I changed, so I changed that alignment a little bit, and that shifted over, so I'd have to shift that over a little bit. And I'm just gonna... Say it again. If you had changed that alignment as part of your parameter, it didn't. It set the it set it all back to the defaults because the motion project it took whatever the motion project settings were. But when I replace it, it doesn't. It leaves my text in, so I don't have to type everything over again. It may not seem a big deal here, but we've got a lot of things in here. It makes a big deal. So that's true with any of these things that you can just having motion allows you to add your own color themes. Uh, you can do much more than add your own color themes, but I'll stop right there with that because that's something that's very useful and easy to kind of figure out. But once you know motion more, you could do anything you want. Like if you want, didn't like those shapes and you wanted different shapes, you could modify those. Now let me show you about this name. And the easiest thing I think to do is I'm going to go back to final to a uh, motion, and I'm just going to choose file, choose file, save as, and I'm going to give it a new name, and I'll just call this one uh, boxes uh, modified. And I don't, uh, I need to give it a category, so I'll put it in, let's see, I'll just call it my titles. And I'll save it to the boxes theme. I'm not going to include unused media. And I don't want a preview movie. You could create it, but I'm just going to skip that now. So now, when I go back to Final Cut, and I select the boxes category again, there's my new one. So you don't need to quit and restart or anything. It's there right away. It just immediately shows up. Now you probably don't want this other one. I just want to show you where those things exist, okay? So um, with Final Cut Pro 10, you can choose where events and projects live. You can move them anywhere you want. But with these effects that you create for Final Cut, they live in one particular location. You go to your Movies folder, you go to Motion Templates, and then you go to the appropriate folder. Remember, effects, generators, titles, and transitions. This one's a title. So I'll go to my titles. That's a category I just created. There's boxes. There's boxes modified. And then the other one actually lives in this uh, bumper opener because that was the default one. I didn't give it a specific one. So I'm going to take this drop down copy. I'm just going to delete this so we won't have it in there. Now, when you delete something, it's not going to disappear right away. Uh, it'll probably be blue if I mouse over it. Let's look at the little thumbnail in cached in memory there. I'd have to quit and restart to see that disappear, but that gets rid of it. Okay, so that's, that's number one, just a quick way that you can very easily um, you know, modify an effect by using motion. Now, let's look at something else. I, th I think this thing's really great. So in motion, um, who's used motion for? Okay, about a third of you here. Now, in Motion 4, you had all these cool templates. There was a template browser. In fact, all those templates were also available in Final Cut 7 in the template browser in Final Cut 7. Now, in Motion 10, I'm sorry, in Motion 5, let's see if it's in Motion 10, uh, we have all these templates that came forward from Motion 4. It's not all of them, but there are uh, like eight of them. And you should see these when you open Motion. If uh, by default, when you download Motion, you get, I think, five of them. And then there's a supplemental content. Anybody see the supplemental content when you do the download? Yeah, you download supplemental content. One of the things it gives you, it gives you a bunch of audio files for Final Cut, and it gives you three more templates in here. Now the thing is, these are some pretty cool templates, but they don't exist in Final Cut. Wouldn't it be cool to have access to all of these templates in Final Cut Pro? And they're just as is, and it's super easy to do. So here's a way, you could buy Motion just to get access for $49, you get like these eight template themes each.